How's it going, guys? It is 1.51 a.m. Tuesday, May 17th here in Japan, and we have an easy pharmacology question. All right, so not going to waste our time. We're just going to talk about some high-yield points, uh, cut to the chase, tell you exactly what you need to know. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. 80-year-old man, he has a two-day history of difficulty voiding and incontinence. Urinary post-void residual volume is 400 milliliters. The prostate is large on di digital rectal examination. His medications are chlorpheniramine, terazosin, hydrochlorothiazide, and verapamil. He drinks four cups of licorice tea daily. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for this patient's findings. So he has overflow incontinence, okay? Urinary post-void volume should generally, generally be under 50 mils. If you estimate wants overflow incontinence, they'll give you 300, 400 mils, okay? They're not gonna make it borderline. Uh, in the setting of BPH, okay, I mean, obviously, uh, old men are prone to overflow incontinence. There's a long fucking discussion we can go on about the different types of incontinences, especially high yield for 2CK. Obviously, diabetes uh, can cause a neurogenic bladder, okay, due to neuropathy to the bladder. It's a different uh, treatment uh, discussion, but the point is this guy overflow incontinence and he's on various meds, so we're just going to walk through the answer choices here. What's causing his uh, presentation here. So we'll go backwards. Choice E, verapamil, wrong fucking answer. This is a non dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. You need to know this causes constipation. Very fucking important for family medicine for TCK in particular. Do not confuse this with the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, i.e. nifedipine and lodipine, which cause peripheral edema slash fluid retention. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, terazosin, wrong answer. Alpha-1 antagonist, reversible, competitive, just used for BPH, okay? Nothing outrageous. Uh, USMLE isn't going to really assess side effects for this, okay? I mean, in theory, yes, alpha-1 antagonist could cause orthostatic hypotension, fainting, if that were the situation here. But it's just, it's not the direction we're going. So terazosin, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, hydrochlorothiazide, wrong answer. Hydrochlorothiazide uh, diuretics can cause hyperglouc, is the mnemonic, G-L-U-C, all capitals. So hyperglycemia, lipidemia, uracemia, calcemia. Okay, they pull calcium out of the urine. NBME 20 offline for step one uh, wants you to know that uh, thiazides can cause galacteria, okay, milky discharge from the nipples. Very fucking weird. Not my opinion. As I just fucking said, it's on NBME 20, okay? And also potassium wasting, okay? I mean, that's a whole discussion in and of itself, but loops and thiazides can cause uh, hypokalemia, all right? They're not potassium-sparing diuretics. Choice B, glycerizic acid. No idea how to pronounce it. Glycerizic, glycerizic acid. Uh, this is what is in licorice, okay? And uh, licorice can cause hypokalemia. Patients who drink it many years, okay, cups of licorice tea, it's actually a thing, okay? Patients can get hypokalemia from it. It's the wrong fucking answer in this case. I just threw it in to be an asshole, be uh, throwing a distractor, okay? Because when students aren't sure what's going on, they choose weird sounding shit. And I just figured that's a cool factoid. So choice A, chlorpheniramine is the correct answer. Now this is high yield, okay? That's why I'm making these questions here. It's not, my, it's not for my own entertainment. So first generation H1 blockers, i.e. chlorpheniramine, diphenhydramine, okay? They have nasty anticholinergic side effects with urinary retention being one of them, okay? So you need to know first-generation H1 blockers, diphenhydramine, chlorpheniramine, the antipsychotics, okay, the D2 antagonists, uh, metoclopramide included, the prokinetic, as well as TCA antidepressants can cause anticholinergic side effects. Now, Lengthy discussion, dumbbells, the mnemonic for cholinergic side effects, therefore anti-dumbbells, the opposite of dumbbells is, an is anticholinergic side effects. So dumbbells, if we have cholinergic side effects, okay? So uh, diarrhea, urination, uh, meiosis, bradycardia, bronchoconstriction in theory, neuromuscular excitation, lacrimation, salivation, sweating. It's just the opposite for anticholinergic, okay? So constipation, urinary retention, madriasis, okay? Pupillary dilation, etc. So this guy has urinary retention. They could give you an old dude, BPH, who's on, let's say, amitriptyline, the TCA. Same deal. Okay, He should be off the amitriptyline. And many questions will say, like, what's the next best step of management, especially in 2CK? And the answer will be discontinue anticholinergic medications or discontinue the diphenhydramine, discontinue the chlorpheniramine, 
Got it. Uh, you should also know benztropine is a muscarinic receptor antagonist that's used to treat acute dystonia uh, due to uh, antipsychotics. Okay, it's just another uh, med you should be aware of. That's an anticholinergic. You know the deal. I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.